Good morning. Welcome once again to the Wise Heart Family Singers Chapel Hour. I'm sure that many of you out there may have a lot of problems, especially with what's been going on in the world today. My sister Peggy Fisher in Arizona called me yesterday and said her whole family was struggling with the COVID virus. My wife's cousin, Albert, and his wife, Johnny, in Tennessee are just fighting this COVID virus also. So I want to encourage you today, if you have any kind of problem that I want to try to make as clear as possible that whatever your problem, God is able to help you.
just when the ham will stop at late or early.
Father, we know you are able. You're more than able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask or think. So I pray today that you will encourage us all. You will encourage our faith. You will encourage us, Lord, that you do want to help us. All you want us to do is to believe and trust in you. So help us to do that today, Lord. Help us to do that as we hear your word and see what others have done, that this will encourage us to do the same and have you meet our needs. We thank you for this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Let me read a couple of texts here that I want to use as sort of a um, basis for my comments. The first is in Matthew chapter 9, verses 27 to 29, when Jesus healed two blind men. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, uh, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And for those that may sometimes wonder if they have enough faith, notice this scripture in Mark chapter 9, verses 23 and 24. Uh, Jesus came upon a father that he just wondered if he had enough faith. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou my unbelief. So what would you like for God to do for you? In your personal life, maybe in the church or the community? I think the question in this text is perhaps one of the most personal questions that Jesus ever asked a person. With all your needs, how would you like for somebody to come out and say, what do you want me to do for you? And this is exactly what the blind men asked. But it's important to notice what Jesus said after this question. He said, what do you want me to do for you? And then he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. So we must take both of these statements together. For Christ's ability to work in our lives, our faith must be operative. He is able, we must trust. You can state the truth like this. He is able according to my faith. Or to make it more personal, mark these seven words in Matthew 9, 28 and 29. Jesus says to you and to me, I am able according to your faith. God can meet every need that we have. We must trust his ability to save us, to succor us, to sustain us, to supply us, and to see us through safely from here to our heavenly home. Now using these five words that I just mentioned, save, and succor, which we will uh, explain later, sustain, supply, and to see us through. Let me share with you what Christ can do for you. Keep these things in mind every day. First of all, he's able to save us to the uttermost, Hebrews 7, 25. Salvation is by grace through faith, Ephesians 2, verse 8. Christ's ability to save us depends on our ability to trust him. Jesus is the only Savior, Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. 
But the question is not only, is he our Savior, but also how much of our lives have we committed to him? Philippians chapter 1 verse 6 says, that he which has begun a good work in you, if you're saved, he's begun a good work in you. He that has begun a good work in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Also in Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25, Wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. And the important word in this verse is uttermost. That means completely, fully, forever, for all time. Paul emphasizes this in Romans chapter 8, verse 1. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Jesus came to make us whole in body and soul. Christ is able to save us from sin and from Satan, and sometimes from even ourselves. But we must trust him daily to do this. There's an old gospel song that uh, goes, trusting as the moments fly, trusting as the days go by, trusting him, whatever, be, whatever befall, trusting Jesus, that is all. And when we do this, then according to our faith, we can experience his grace and power in our lives. He is able. We must trust. Not only is Christ able to save us, he is able to succor us in times of temptation. <laughs> that, that word may sound kind of uh, weird, uh, but uh, it, Hebrews 2.18 says, For in that we, he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. Now this word succor is, is an interesting word, but it's a, an encouraging word. It means timely help. It means to run to the aid of those that cry for help. The same word is used in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, where we are told to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help or to, that will succor us in the time of need. Also, in Hebrews 13, 6, it says, God has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, so that we can boldly say, the Lord is my helper, or he's the one that succors me, and I will not fear what man can do unto me. The temptation, those testing times, he or Christ is able to help us during our times of testing. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are. Also in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13, There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation make a way of escape so that you may be able to bear it. So he is able to deliver us every time we are tempted. We must trust and rely on him to do that. Again, it's according to our faith that this comes to pass. He is able. We must trust. But what about just living day to day in between the trials and the temptation? Well, that brings us to a third point. He is able to sustain us in the midst of our trials and also in our day to day service for him. Second Corinthians chapter nine, verse eight says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. When adversity comes, we can react in several different ways. We can complain and grumble like those mentioned in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 10, where Paul points back to the people of Israel, how they grumbled and complained to Moses. 
until God delivered them. Or oh, this doesn't please God. Or oh, we can be filled with self-pity. We can feel sorry for ourselves and want everybody else to feel sorry for us. I remember the story in the Old Testament of the 12 spies that uh, went and looked Canaan over and they came back and 10 of them said, we can't do it. We can't do it. There's no way we're going to be able to do this. The cities are big. There's giants in the land. We're just like little old grasshoppers there. We, there's no way we can do it. <laughs> but then Caleb and Joshua came up and sang their little duet. We are able to go up and take the country to possess the land from Jordan to the sea. Though giants there be in our way to hinder, God will surely give us the victory. So like these 12 spies, that, that kind of an attitude doesn't glorify God and really doesn't help us either because their attitude caused them to discourage all of the people. And because of that, that generation was not allowed to enter into the promised land. Uh, then we can become bitter. We may even question God's ways and maybe sometimes even feel a little resentful. Uh, we can lose faith altogether and, and ask, Lord, don't you, don't you even care? Asaph in Psalm 73 kind of almost got to that place. He said right at the beginning of the psalm, he said, my feet almost slipped. I saw all the people looking around saying, doesn't God care? Doesn't he see, see what's going on all around us? The rich are getting rich and they're treading down the poor and on and on he went. He said, I didn't understand any of it until I went to the house of the Lord. And then I realized God was able to take care of the situation. We can go completely under and allow ourselves to be overwhelmed with the pressures of life. But these reactions are not necessary because God is able to sustain us by his grace. Now this word sustain, it's used 38 times in the Old Testament and it's used in several different ways. It can mean to provide, to establish, to uphold, to support, to help, to come to the rescue, to be a helper, to be an ally, to nourish, to bear, to carry, to guide, to protect, to defend. All of us, all of us need this kind of help sometime in our lives. In 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 9, God told Elijah, I have command a, commanded a widow woman to sustain you. In Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 21, he was going back over Israel's 40 years in the wilderness. And he said, Yea, 40 years did thou, God, sustain them in the wilderness, so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes waxed not old, and their feet swelled not. How would you like to have clothes that lasted you for 40 years? <laughs> Psalm 55, verse 22. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Psalm 3, verse 5. David in this psalm, if you look at the little caption above it, it'll say he wrote this psalm when he was fleeing from Absalom, his son. He had a lot of troubles. Uh, yet in the midst of those troubles, he said, I laid me down and I slept and I wakened, for the Lord sustained me. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 to 10, talks about Paul's thorn in the flesh. He said, I asked God three times to take it away. And he said, I just can't do that right now, but I want you to know my grace is sufficient for you. I am able to keep you. Philippians 4, verses 11 to 13, Paul said, In all these things that I've gone through, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens or sustains me. So God is able to save us. He's able to succor us. He's able to sustain us. But again, we must trust him. God is able also to supply every need in answer to believing prayer. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think 
according to the power that works in us, there's no doubt about his ability. The answer depends upon our faith. He's going to do all this, but it depends on our faith. God can do great things. He's just waiting on us. He's just waiting on us to call on him. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. I call this God's phone number. J-E-R-3-3-3. Call upon me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. How often, how often we limit God by our doubt and our unbelief. Look again at Ephesians 3.20. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above. You know, until just the other day, I've read this scripture, uh, I don't know how many times, but I was looking at it. Usually we, we read it, God is able to do exceeding and abundantly above. But I looked, and there was no comma there. It just meant exceeding abundantly. And I said, I, I need to check this out. So I looked in my uh, Greek New Testament, and these two words, exceeding and abundantly, are one word in the Greek language. And it means super abundantly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he's, Paul is saying, I can do abundantly, but I can do exceeding above abundantly. So I can do it super abundantly, uh, for you above all that you would ask or think. But it's according to something, according to the power that works in us. So God's invitation to us is to come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Ask in faith and then believe for the answer. God is able. We must trust. And finally, God is able to keep us until we stand complete in his presence. The last two verses of the book of Jude are these. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. Amen. So how wonderful that he is able and willing and guarantees to keep us as long as we keep him first in our lives. We experience that assurance in this truth as we trust his promises. We experience assurance on the basis of our faith. Our confidence in Christ comes as we commit everything to Him. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12. These are some of Paul's last words to this young minister. Paul says, For I know, I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that He is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. And another old song, the last verse of this song says, Jesus will walk with me in life's fair morning, and when the shadows of evening must come, living or dying, he will not forsake me. Jesus will walk with me all the way home. Hallelujah. He's able. He's able to save us to the uttermost. He's able to succor us when we're tempted. He's able to sustain us in our trials. He's able to supply every need. He's able to perform what he has promised. He's able to make all grace abound toward us. He's able to keep what we have committed under him. He's able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory. He's able to do super abundantly above all that we ask or think. And finally, he is able to see us all the way home. He is able. We must trust. Shall we pray? Father, how wonderful it is to know that 
whatever the problem is, whether it's sickness or circumstances, family, friends, church, community, you are able to help and to solve every problem. So we look to you today. We know there are those that we've mentioned before. There's Peggy Fisher and her family in Arizona, Albert and Johnny and the family in Tennessee, and others throughout the land. They have needs. Lord, I pray today for those that have physical needs right now. Oh, Father, let them feel your healing power coursing through their veins. Lord, just throughout this day, may they feel the healing power of Christ in their lives. And for others that may have any other kind of problem, Lord, help them to realize that you are able. You're more than able. You're super abundantly more than able to do exceeding abundantly and abundantly more than we ask or think. And Lord, for any that are not saved, oh, Father, maybe they've been grasping for things and they, they just got to the end of the rope. They don't know what to do. Help them today, Lord, to look to you and to realize that you are able to save them and to keep them as they serve you for the rest of their lives. We ask these things, Lord, in the name of Jesus, and it's all for your glory, for we ask it in his name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for The Chapel Hour with Rev. Russell Weishart and the Weishart Family Singers. For previous programs, please go to YouTube and search for The Weishart Family Singers Channel. If you're a minister, teacher, or student of the Bible and would like to access Rev. Weishart's messages, outlines, and sermon notes, please go to thechapelhour.blogspot.com. And of course, one of the best ways to stay in touch with us is on the Weishart Family Singers Facebook page. We want to thank everyone for finding us, for your encouragement, for subscribing to our channel, and for hitting that little like button. We look forward to seeing you next week on The Chapel Hour. Thank you for tuning in to the Chapel Hour. We trust that it has been a real blessing to you today. And if it has, we would appreciate it if you would maybe go to Facebook and leave us an encouraging message. And in the meantime, God bless you and have a wonderful day.